Update on my sister thinking that her husband is the father of my baby despite a DNA test proving he wasn't and identifying the real father. Original story. The real father can't legally claim our son without causing himself issues. So we agreed to an informal arrangement where he didn't claim him but still paid support. He gave my sister his name and he got on a video call with her and verified that he was the father. But he just can't do a formal DNA test or claim our son. To clarify by formal DNA test, I mean one that would be court ordered and result in him taking parental rights, while the informal test was done privately and we have agreed not to take it to a court. Despite the actual father telling my sister that he was the father in the DNA test, my sister is still convinced that the father is her husband, as they share significant physical resemblance that a bio dad also shares. Other than the physical resemblance, which I would say is debatable as he's a baby and looks like a potato most days, my sister suspects that her husband and I had an affair, because her husband and I have a lot in common and were friends before they got together, and it's really good with my son. We're also all living together, so she thinks there was opportunity. We told her until we were blue in the face that her husband wasn't the father, and we got another test through the same facility that did a test on the real father to prove it. But because it was done by the same facility, my sister then suggested that we switched the names on the test results. At this point, I have no idea what to do. She's being incredibly difficult for no good reason. She won't listen to us, and we don't know how to deal with it as we feel that she's locked onto this idea and won't drop it despite all the evidence we've given her. Any ideas? Now for the top advice before reading the update. Honestly, if she doesn't care to listen to you or to reason, maybe cut her off for a bit. That's a harmful thing to be saying about someone. Does she have kids? Is her baby the first family's grandkid? Part of the problem is that we live together, so there's only so much cutting off I can do. Neither of us can move out either. This is the first grandchild, and the first baby for several years, and I was actually the youngest family member overall before my son was born. But our parents aren't in our lives. Mom passed while dad sucks, so he's not exactly a grandchild. Ask her to collect DNA samples of your son and her husband, and to send it off wherever she wants to get it tested. Then she can believe the results. We have said she can do that anytime she wants, but she has yet to arrange anything. I think you need to move out. This sounds quite delusional, and I do not see you resolving this in a quick manner. I can move out, but not immediately. We go out the house we live in, and right now I need to stay here for financial reasons, as do my sister and her husband. The layout of the house does allow for some space to be enforced, but not much. Can't your baby daddy help you get a place that's safe to stay, for the kid's sake? He's still working out the finances on his end, so we have a consistent amount of support that he can realistically keep to. He is sending some money right now, but until the other financial plans are in place, the money he's currently sending isn't enough to cover everything. A down for the update. While I didn't fear for the safety of my child or myself, Several commenters on the last post did, and when I showed my sister's husband a post, he admitted that he found a secret camera in their bedroom a few weeks ago. When I heard that, we agreed to deal with us now. We talked to my sister yesterday, saying that if she didn't give us a rational reason for her behavior, we would both go and stay with friends, separately, until she saw a mental health professional and we knew it was safe for all of us to be around her. She locked herself in a room. When her husband asked to be let into the room so he could get his bag to stay with his friend, they began arguing. And between rounds of arguing with him, she would come crying to me. Literally. Between us, we got the truth from her. While my sister has always told me that she was on defense about kids, she told her husband that she definitely wanted them. Truth is, she has never wanted children and doesn't think she ever will. She knew this before she and her husband got together, but lied thinking that after they married, she could talk him out of wanting kids. She managed to convince him that they should hold off on kids, until I had a baby which prompted him to ask her about kids again. She realized she had to leave him, but then she lost her job, so he was supporting both of them. A no-fault divorce requires they live apart for years before filing, and my sister could no longer afford this, so she realized it would have to be an at-fault divorce, and it would have to be his fault. She never believed that he was actually the father of my child, but she thought that by freezing out both of us, combined with her accusing us of cheating, being crammed into a small space together, him being good with my son and our past friendship, it would all lead to us actually having an affair that she could catch on camera. 
She could then divorce him due to cheating, and rush the process and push for alimony on the grounds that he cheated on her with me while she was unemployed, and without alimony she would be stuck living with me, her husband's affair partner. The only flaw in her plan was that neither of us would ever do that to her. Her husband is currently staying with friends until he figures out what he wants to do. I'm at the house still, with my sister and my son. Things are tense, but she's agreed to sell the house, though she isn't happy about it. She has stayed in her area of the house all day, and I'm hoping she keeps to this. So, your sister is a terrible person. Hope you can see this. She lied to her husband and tricked him into a relationship under false pretenses, basically. Having kids is a huge life goal for some. That's just number one. She is so much of a C-word that she wanted to frame her sister and her husband to have an affair so she could get money? Jesus Christ, what a toxic person. I do know that it was terrible of her to lie to her husband like that. I was friends with him before they even met and set them up. Because my understanding was that she was on defense, but willing to have kids and he wanted kids. So I figured they could work the details out themselves. If I knew that she didn't mean it when she said she was on defense, I never would have set them up. Technically speaking, she didn't want to frame us. She wanted us to actually have an affair and face the repercussions, but she was also trying to manipulate us into doing it. And her plan was literally for me to sleep with her husband, so it's still not great. I didn't think there was a mental health aspect to this initially, but her plan just seems so messed up that I think mental health issues might be worth considering. Wow, I really don't understand how you could trust your sister with your health and safety or the health and safety of your son. She sounds insane and dangerous and totally willing to throw you under the bus in any way that would get her what she wants. If I thought we were at risk, I would long be gone, but I don't think she'll hurt us. I think now her husband is out of the house and she's confessed, there's nothing she can do to us, and she knows it. If I do begin to genuinely fear for the safety of my son, I will stay with a friend until I can get my own place. I hope that you've at least made your friends and family aware of what's going on. I just think your sister's behavior is way past what most normal people would consider sane, and there's really not telling what she'll come up with next. We have limited family, and of the family we do have, we interact with different members. I thought I would wait and see what her husband wanted to do, your sister is straight up garbage. What kind of person does that? Holy hell. She's a freaking lunatic. You should really stay away from her crazy ass. There's really no excuse for that kind of behavior. She needs all the shrinks. We're stuck here sharing a house for now, but she is staying in her rooms at the moment. And I hope that she will stick to that so she stays in her space and I get the rest of the house. I have no explanation for her behavior. I'm actually thinking this might be a mental health issue. This might be the first time in history that someone has wanted their husband to sleep with their sister. Next story is titled, My wife and her best friend accused me of having an affair, then got angry when I didn't have one. Either the one male and my wife, 29 female, had a baby last December. It was a traumatic birth, and my wife developed postpartum depression. While she was originally going to go back to work after the birth, She's been struggling enough that we decided to wait until our daughter was a year old and reassess, and she has been going to therapy weekly. With my wife home full-time, I've had to work increased hours. This is something we discussed prior to making this decision, and she knew this from the start. A few weeks ago, my boss approached me about a project that would require a lot of overtime in a short amount of time. It would both be great financially and for my career. I talked to my wife about it, and she agreed that I should say yes to my boss. For the four weeks I'd be working on this, my mother-in-law and her best friend Jessie, 29 female name changed, would come help out with some of the duties that I typically do. Jessie's a stay-at-home mom with a four-year-old and a two-year-old. She began coming over during the day and would watch the kids with my wife. Three weeks into the project, it became clear that we'd need a few more weeks to get it together. I went home that night and talked to my wife about it. She said she was okay with it, but got very cold in the days after. It wasn't the neutral behavior over the past few months, so I didn't think much about it and tried not to take it personally. During the last week of the project, I got home one night and saw that Jessie was still at the house. I didn't think much about it, said hi to her and my wife, and then went to go check on our daughter. But before I could get to her room, I heard Jessie say something along the lines of, he doesn't even stop to greet you. Definitely a sign. I turned around and asked what it was a sign of, Immediately, my wife started crying, and Jessie started accusing me of having an affair. 
She told me that I must hate my wife because she has PPD, and I'm not attracted to her because she gained weight from the pregnancy. Neither of these things are true. I'm trying my best to help my wife through her PPD while supporting our family. And I think she looks great how she is right now. She just hasn't wanted to have intimacy that I haven't pushed. Jessie then demanded to see my phone. I told her no. She told me that's a sign that I'm guilty. I told my wife that I would let her see my phone if she wanted to. She nodded and something inside me broke. I guess it was the thought that she actually believed I was having an affair really got to me. And that she didn't trust me after everything we've been through. Well, she looked through the phone and there was no evidence. Jessie started saying that I deleted the evidence. She started screaming and woke up our daughter, so I told her to get out of the house. Eventually, she left, and I went to calm our daughter since my wife was still on the couch crying. When my daughter was asleep again, I sat down by my wife and tried to talk to her about what's been happening. She told me that she's been worried ever since I started working all the overtime. I told her that we'd talked about how good of an opportunity it was, and she agreed to letting me take on this project. She said it was very suspicious to increase the length of the project. I told her that sometimes that happens. She wanted more evidence, so I showed her messages and emails with timestamps from work and pay stubs showing the overtime. She said she believed me and was sorry for doubting me. It was just that Jessie had been telling her that these were all signs that I was cheating. I asked her why she believed Jessie more than me and why she didn't come to me with her concerns. She didn't have a real answer. It's been a couple weeks and the project is over. I actually scaled back and I'm trying to work a little less than I was before the project so I can spend more time with my wife and daughter. But I feel so burnt out trying to do everything and becoming resentful because in the back of my mind, I know that my wife doesn't trust me. I ask myself what happens the next time I have a project, or I have to run errands one day, or if I have a business trip. Am I going to come back every time to accusations that I'm cheating? I've tried bringing it up a couple times, but my wife tells me it's not the time and that she's tired or sad. I try to be mindful of her feelings, but I wonder if that means that I can ever have any of my own. I'm not sure what to do here. Any advice for how I can move forward? Now for the advice. This is a horrible situation made worse by your wife's friend, who is possibly projecting her own relationship issues on you guys. I would go to couples counseling and keep reassuring your wife that you'll love her. Depression makes you think crazy things. I hope the best for you. This sounds to me like Jessie is projecting onto your already very vulnerable wife. I'm happy to hear your wife is already seeing a therapist and totally agree that couples counseling is important. But just so you know, your feelings are valid. You are pushing yourself too hard and stretching yourself too thin. It's okay to feel the way you do, but please make sure you address your feelings. Don't bury them because it's not the right time. It won't ever be the right time, which is where couples counseling can come in to help force the conversation. You sound like a wonderful husband, and your wife sounds like she's pretty great too. And hopefully with some help, you'll be back to your new normal with your little family. Best of luck, man. Jessie probably projected her own problems into your relationship. You have to tell your wife that she should trust you. Maybe some therapy. Her best friend damaged a lot of something that wasn't her freaking problem. She is the devil on your wife's shoulder. And Jessie should never be allowed into the house again. She's an enemy to the relationship. It's not just that Jessie's saying stuff like Opie's cheating. She's also undermining a new mother's confidence by saying her post-delivery body is less than appealing. She's playing Opie's wife's insecurities like an angel plays the harp. Why would you do this to someone you call friend? Last story. My friend group is torn over a fight I had with another friend because she asked me out. Me 27 male, and a girl Ava is 27 female. So Ava asked me out and it was in front of our whole group. I rejected her politely and she was understandably pissed, but she kept bugging me about why I rejected her because she knew that I found her attractive. True. I didn't want to say anything at first, but she kept pissing me off about it. So I finally told her it was because of her past multiple toxic relationships. She was shocked and angrily asked why I was judging her by her past. So I said that I didn't want to date someone who didn't respect herself and allowed herself to be willingly treated like dirt and kept repeating the cycle. She had complained constantly to us and we told her to not date jerks, but she never listened. She then called me an incel and superficial and said that she was just having fun. So I asked her why she couldn't have the fun with me, and she said because I was the boring slash husband kind of boyfriend. Not gonna lie, that hurt me a bit because I've got a low-key life. 
work, play football, and hang out with friends. I've had multiple relationships, but gotten screwed slash cheated on because I've not paid attention to the girl 24-7, or that I was too nice. I got angry at her, and said that she was just an old hag who couldn't have fun anymore because her makeup couldn't hide her ugliness, which I regretted instantly. She was in tears and left the apartment crying and went home. The rest of the dinner was pretty awkward in silence, and soon everyone left. Some of my guy friends called me later saying it was alright, and that I didn't do anything wrong, and she was asking for it. But some of my gal friends said that Ava was confessing to me and was in a vulnerable position, and I hurt her a lot. I've got no idea what to do, and I don't want to mess up the group over this. She asked you in front of the friend group. She did this out in the open to put pressure on you to say yes. The hag comment might have been a bit much, but Ava isn't all innocent to toxicity here. She's disrespectful to people's no. I'd suggest avoiding Ava. Keep cordial but not friendly. Continuing to have fun with your friends and enjoy yourself. She got ugly on you first. Aha. Uh -huh. Flip the sexes. If a guy had asked a girl out in front of everyone and pressured her, the reddit goblins would goose step to a different tempo. Your response wasn't great, but I don't know what she was thinking doing that right then and there. I'd apologize for what was said and how it was said but that's just me. And then demanding an answer as to why he said no while still in front of everyone. How awkward and uncomfortable for him that must have been. Like she was starting out with no boundaries or consideration already and then pushed, turning it into a scene. More toxicity, Ava.